Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a walkthrough or how-to on building your own PC. Uh, I'm going to build this computer completely on camera showing all the steps and how I do it. Um, this is the case I'll be using so it's going to be a little bit of a unique build. Um, so it's not going to necessarily translate to all builds but a lot of the steps will be the same as they would be with any computer so it, it, it'll give you a good idea of how to build your own computer, how to do all the steps. I know there's probably a lot of tutorials out there, but you know, this is just maybe another perspective, another uh, another option that you can look at. And again, this is going to be a little bit of a unique build because I'm using this Akasa Euler case is what it's called. And it is a fanless silent PC case. So it's a it's a real small case and the heat sink is the case itself. So this the, the case itself acts as the heat sink for the processor. And it is a fanless design and it's going to be totally silent when we're done. So kind of a kind of a neat little setup. I know when I saw this case a while back, I knew I wanted to build a computer in it. And I thought, why not uh, videotape it and show how it's done? Uh, so let's get started. First thing I'll do is kind of show all the different components I'm going to use in the build. Like I said, this is the case I'll be using. This case does require a thin mini ITX motherboard. And this is the motherboard I've chosen. Now, there's not actually a lot of motherboard options out there in the thin uh, mini ITX form factor, so I was a little bit limited, but I was able to find one that offered the features that I was looking for. Uh, this is the Asus H81T motherboard, and it's the Revision 2.0. Um, so you'll get a good look at this motherboard in a little bit here. Uh, so this is the motherboard I'm going with. For a processor, I've chosen an Intel Pentium processor, and this is the G. Uh, 3460 model. It's the LGA 1150 socket. Um, I went with this processor just because I think it offers a really good uh, price performance ratio. Uh, so I think it's a pretty good, pretty good value for the money. Uh, this is a little bit higher power than what the case is designed for. This processor actually is rated at a 53 watt TDP, so thermal design power. And the case, uh, the manufacturer recommends a 35 watt or lower thermal design power. So this processor is going to be a pretty good test of the cooling capacity of this case. So it's going to be a bit of a workout for it, but I think just for kind of general everyday use, I think it'll be fine. Uh, but I suppose I'll find out. Now, the reason why I went with a higher processor uh, wattage than what the case is recommended is just because there's not a lot out there right now in the 35 watt range. Um, Intel offers several, but none of them are really available on the market. I don't know if that's just a factor of the fact that Skylake just came out and so there's a lot of maybe there it could be some transitional time you know there's not a lot of the the older Haswell and Broadwell in the 35 watt range available and maybe they're being kind of phased out and maybe Skylake's being kind of phased in and that's why there's not a lot available but uh, this is the processor I went with for a storage drive um, go on solid state to keep the silent features of this case intact. You don't want a hard drive in there making a bunch of noise if you're going for a silent uh, silent operation. So I went with a solid state drive. Also uh, just the speed and you know just everyday uh, performance and responsiveness is just hard to beat with solid state. So I did go with a solid state drive. Uh, this is the Toshiba uh, Q Series Pro drive. Uh, I've used one before and uh, had good success with it. Uh, only went with 128 gigabyte option just because uh, this is going to be just kind of a general use PC. I don't need to store a ton of stuff on it. And also, um, just to spend the extra money for the, a large solid state drive and something like this doesn't make a lot of sense to me because external storage is so so easy. There's so many different options for it. You have network attached storage and tons of different just external drive options. So I wanted a solid state drive. Didn't need a huge, didn't need a huge drive. 128 gigabytes a good size. And uh, I, this drive was actually on clearance for cheaper than I could get just about anything else for. And like I said, I've used one in the past and had good luck with it. So the RAM I went with is 8 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws RAM. And this motherboard does use uh, laptop size RAM. So this is a 204-pin uh, uh, RAM designed basically for laptops. But that's the, uh, that's the RAM that this particular motherboard uses. Um, the, no particular reason for going this, with this RAM other than I've had good luck with this brand in the past and it was a good price. Now this motherboard has a 
DC to DC power supply built in. Uh, and basically what that means is you don't have to buy the traditional uh, eight, uh, AC power supply that you would for most computers. Uh, this one basically just uses a laptop power supply and this is just a uh, Dell brand uh, 90 watt power supply that I, or AC adapter that I bought online. Uh, just, just one that I picked out that had generally decent reviews and again was a decent price. Uh, this box isn't much to look at, but it is the Intel 3160 uh, Wi-Fi adapter. So this is going to be the wireless card. I don't know if you can see the information there. And it also has Bluetooth built in. So this is going to be my Wi-Fi wi and Bluetooth card. And since this is an all-metal case, um, I didn't want any chance on the signals being blocked by internal antennas. So I'm going with some external antennas. So these are the external antennas I bought just... Uh, just a kit that I bought on Amazon. Um, it's by High Tech Solutions. I don't know if you can see the information there. Uh, High Tech Solutions uh, antenna kit, and it's just some wires to to uh, connect to the wireless card with a little uh, a little fitting that goes through the side of the case, and then the the antennas just connect on the back. So it's very similar to the antennas that you would get with a standard uh, PCI Express wireless card. Uh, but this one's just designed with these cable extensions to go into an internal card there. Um, just some thermal compound I've had and used for a while. Uh, it's just Arctic MX4 thermal compound. Nothing too exciting there. And for an operating system, I've gone with Windows 10. Um, no particular reason. Uh, I've used it. It's okay. I, I'm not super in love with it, but it works. So go with that. And this is the USB version. Um, this one is actually on a USB drive because this case will not have a optical drive. So there's not going to be any CD, DVD, Blu-ray drive or anything like that in this. So I went with the USB version just to ease installation so I don't have to use an external drive to install the operating system. And that's it. Um, that's the components I'm going to use in the build. It's everything it takes. Uh, I'm going to start getting kind of set up here and I'll come back with you when I start the first steps. All right, as you can see, I've opened up the motherboard package and taken that out. Something that'll come with all motherboards is a little panel. Uh, it's the input and output cover panel uh, that's gonna snap into your case. And so we're gonna go ahead and install that now. It's a good idea to just go ahead and install that right away. Um, it's pretty easy that once you get into things, um, you start you know, really tearing into your build. You get, with the flow of things, you go ahead and slap the motherboard in and suddenly realize that you didn't put your panel in. So I like to do that first. And the way, the way these work is they just snap in from the inside. Uh, just make sure you got the orientation correct. And you just line that up with the opening in the case and it just it just snaps in place. And once it's once it's seated on all sides, just confirm that it is it is seated all the way through and all the way around. Otherwise you're gonna have a lot harder time. If this doesn't get seated fully, when you go to slide your motherboard into place, it's going to end up pressing up against this and anywhere it's not seated properly and it's going to, you're going to have a hard time getting your motherboard to line up. So just make sure that's popped all the way through and seated properly. And that's all there is to that. Get that seated. You should be good to go there. All right, the next step I'm going to go with is installing the processor onto the motherboard. I went ahead and opened up the processor. Now this one does come with a cooling fan setup, uh, but we're not going to new, use that. Like I said, we're, the uh, case is the is the heatsink cooling system for the processor. Uh, so this is the processor. It comes in this little uh, this little plastic case to protect it. On the back here are the contact points for the for the processor to motherboard contact. Uh, you don't want to touch any of these. Like I said, it's in a plastic case now, but you don't want to touch any of these. Uh, you want to make sure this is clean um, and you know doesn't get any kind of dirt or debris or finger oils or anything on it so that these contacts stay clean and you get uh, a good reliable contact with the motherboard. Now the motherboard also comes with a cover over uh, the socket, the processor socket, so you don't want to remove that until you're actually ready to put the processor in. That way there's no chance that, or at least limited chance, that you're going to get dirt or any, anything inside that socket there that could interfere with that contact. Now the processor will only insert one way into the socket, and if I open this up here you can, you can maybe just barely see there's little notches out of the sides of the processor there and there and those are going to line up with notches in the socket. Uh, this is the LGA 1150 socket. 
Uh, I think most of them are going to work pretty similar to this. Uh, but the way this one works is you have this locking bar here on the side and it's hooked under a little a little tab here. So what you're going to do is you're going to push down on that slightly, pull it to the side, and then let it lift up and off. You pull this all the way to the side and you can see it actually goes ahead and lifts that lifts the processor right up and out. Or lifts this the cover, sorry, right up and out. So I'll open that completely and pop this plastic cover off. So this plastic cover is removed now. If you pull that back, it'll flip that open. And now those are the pins, the contact pins. And it's it might be hard to see, but you can see there's little notches here and one on the other side here. And those are what's going to line up with the notches on the processor. So that's actually the direction you're going to put that in. Now you don't want to use any force or press the processor into the socket. Uh, this uh, the mount is actually the, the actual socket uh, bracket is designed to apply all the pressure needed. So you don't want to force the processor down into the socket. Carefully lift the processor up and out by the sides, and then I'm going to set it down in the socket gently. And just once I once it gets everything's lined up the way it's supposed to be, it'll drop right into the socket. So you can see the the notches line up on each, on both sides. It's in line all the way around, so it, it's dropped it's dropped into place. And like I said, I didn't use any pressure at all. There's no it's not pressed down in there. It's just resting gently on the pins. And so now we just fold fold the bracket back into place. And there's a notch here in the uh, the bracket that'll slide underneath this screw to hold it in place and there's tabs here that'll press the processor down. So now I just fold this lever back down and it's actually pressing the processor down into the socket and I just hook that hook that bar back under the notch and that's it. The processor's installed ready to go. Next we're going to go ahead and install the RAM under the motherboard. Uh, this motherboard does have like I said RAM slots that are very similar to what you'd find in a laptop. Instead of standing the RAM, the RAM vertically like it would in most uh, desktop heart, uh, motherboards. These are actually going to go in sideways and then lay flat uh, like they would in a in a laptop. So here's the RAM chips. Not quite as sensitive as far as holding them as the processor, but they do have contact strips down here and you don't want to touch those if you can help it because that again you want to keep that clean uh, and not get any kind of debris or anything on that so it maintains a reliable connection. And the way these uh, are going to insert rather than again just pressing down vertically you're going to come in at a little bit of an angle. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm holding it just at a little bit of an angle here. And you're going to want to press, give a little bit of pressure and it'll slide into that, it'll seat into that slot. And then you can see there's a little, there's a little tab here in the socket so that it can only go in one way. And then once it's seated with that, if you just press it down, it's going to snap right into place. And it snaps into place right under uh, right under these little clips and these little clips will snap in and, and hold it in place. And I'm just going to do the same thing with the other RAM chip. Line the tab up with the tab on the motherboard. Just it's going to take a little bit of force, just press it, press it into that slot. And then now when I press it down, it's going to snap into place under the tabs. And you're all set. The RAM is in place and seated and uh, you're ready to go. That's all there is to installing the RAM. Next, I'm going to install the wireless card. Uh, this is the mini PCI Express slot on this motherboard, and it's a half-length mini PCI Express slot. And uh, I don't know if I can get it to focus, I don't know if you can see that slot well there, uh, but that's a little uh, slot for this card. Uh, there is a screw in place that holds the card down, uh, so and that comes pre-installed in the motherboard, and that's just so that you have that when you want to install a card. I'm going to go ahead and remove that first. Once you have the screw removed, you're ready to install the card. This is a half-length uh, mini PCI Express wireless card. You can, I don't know if you can tell from the size of my fingers there, it is very tiny. Uh, this is going to install very similar to the RAM. There's a, a notch in the card, and that matches up with a little tab on the socket. So you're just going to line those up, and you're going to press it into the slot. It goes in, again, at a little bit of an angle. Not as much as with the RAM because uh, you don't have the same the same tabs that hold it down, but it'll be slightly spring loaded, so you just hold that in place. Just carefully set that screw in the hole, and there's only there's only a screw on one side that 
The other side of the card has a hole in it, but that's just would be depending on the motherboard on which side they put the post that holds it. Uh, but it only uses one to hold it down, so I'll just go ahead and tighten that screw. Now you want the screw to hold the card in place and not work loose, uh, but it doesn't have to be crazy tight. You don't have to, you know, crank that crank that tight with a ton of force. It just has to be good and snug so it won't work its way loose. And that's it. The wireless card is installed. Now there are uh, antenna connectors, uh, two of them on this card, one for the Wi-Fi and one for the Bluetooth. I'll be installing the uh, the antennas for that later, but just so you know, those are the two sockets on the card that the antennas will connect to later. All right, now I'm gonna install the, the solid state drive and I've unpacked from the packet that comes with the case, uh, the hardware that you use to install the drive. Now, depending on what case you get, drives are gonna mount a lot of different ways. Some of them will have um, like little drawer slots that you pull out and the case, ju the, the drive just snaps into it and the drawer kind of snaps back into the case. And you know, some of them are gonna bolt, you know, bolt in different places in the case. So it just depends on what case you're running, how it's gonna work. Uh, this one actually uh, just mounts uh, right into the bottom of the case down here and it comes with some hardware to set that up so I'm going to go ahead and get that assembled and I'll uh, put it in the case for you and show you how it works. Alright so I've gotten this all set up here. Uh, this particular case just comes with a couple of brackets that screw onto the bottom of the drive and then that's going to just uh, mount in the bottom of the case here. Uh, this is going to be the case, the case with a lot of cases uh, but in particular with this one because it mounts down in here underneath and then the motherboard has to kind of situate over top of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect the wiring to the drive now and have the wiring just kind of laying aside so that when we're ready to put the motherboard in it's all ready to go. Uh, this is going to use a uh, SATA uh, data cable and power cable and this case does come with short, uh, with extra short cables with the proper angled ends on them which is very convenient because that way you know, you're not trying to figure out exactly what you're going to need with this to make it work out with the, the motherboard placement and everything. And actually, the motherboard also comes with the same thing. It comes with a cable, uh, a data cable and a power cable, uh, but these are much shorter and it's going to be a lot less uh, cable mess inside the case. Now, another thing you want to do is uh, kind of work out exactly how the motherboard is going to go in the case and where the connectors are going to be, uh, because that might dictate which direction you mount the uh, the drive, so, you know, which direction the the cords want to face and I've done that and I want the cord the wiring to face this direction towards me so uh, that's how I'm gonna plug it in that's how I'm gonna uh, connect it up and on these connectors they have a little a little notch that lines up with the tab on the drive so you can only plug them in one way so I'll get those both plugged in and then I'm gonna go ahead and mount the drive in the bottom of the case now it comes with four screws and four mounting holes uh, I'm only going to use two. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I'm not too worried about it. Next, I'm going to go ahead and mount the antenna wires in the case for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, like I said, these are the antenna wires that are going to connect to the, the wireless card. And this case does have two holes uh, for, an, for external antennas. So this case is already perfectly set up for it. It just comes with these little rubber plugs in the holes in case you aren't going to use them. So we'll just go ahead and get those pulled out. And then the way these work is they just have a little uh, threaded portion and a little nut and a washer on here. So we'll just go ahead and take the nut and the washer off. And then this will just feed through the hole from the back side. And there's a little flat spot that lines up with the flat spot in the case so that once this is in place, it can't rotate. And that way you can just drop on your washer and you can go ahead and tighten that nut and the fitting can't rotate so that way you don't have to hold it inside while you tighten that fitting. And I'm not going to worry about getting it super tight right now, just enough so that it's not rattling. But I can always snug that up later if I need to. I'll go ahead and get the second one mounted here. Alright, with both of those mounted we're just about ready to put our motherboard into the case. Now we have this extra wiring here uh, in the case. Uh, we have the hard drive LED wiring, uh, the power LED wiring, and the power switch wiring. Now this all goes to the front panel of the case, and depending on what case you have and how many features the front of your case has, you'll have various amounts of this wiring. You might have uh, a fan mounted up front that has wiring coming in. You may have uh, front mounted USB ports. You may have a reset switch. Uh, and all that kind of stuff is going to have its own wiring that's going to come in that's going to have to be landed on your motherboard 
and the motherboards will have a place for that. On this one, we have some front panel wiring right here that is going to be for our power switch, power LED, and a hard drive activity LED. Um, and they're usually labeled on the board, but it's pretty small and it sometimes can be a little bit confusing as far as which of these pins is which. Uh, so it just refer back to the manual that comes with your motherboard and it'll typically have a, a nice diagram with a breakdown of what terminals are for what. Now with most cases, you're going to install the motherboard into the case before you do before you connect most of the wiring to the motherboard. So once you get your, your main components connected, you're going to put it in the case uh, and then you're going to connect all your wiring. Well, in this one, the motherboard actually installs into the case face down. So we kind of have to install the wiring either before it's in there or kind of as we're, as we're maneuvering it into place, connect the last couple of the connectors. Uh, so I'm going to start with the connectors right now. The first two I'm going to do are the antenna wires because there's lots of length there and um, I, I can still kind of leave it laying like this and get everything else done after I do the, connect those wires. Now these wires just have a, a tiny little socket on the end of them that plugs onto the antenna connectors. And they're just going to snap right in place. And it does take some force, so my hands are going to be in the way. You're not going to be able to see it much. So I might just kind of cut away a little bit, but just so you know, there's just a little a little socket here that just snaps onto the uh, snaps onto the card there. All right, so I got those snapped in place, and once they are snapped in place, they do swivel a little bit, uh, so you can kind of get them positioned as you need to. Um, I'm going to just try and kind of have them off to the side so they're not catching on things while we're trying to set the motherboard in place. Uh, the rest of the wiring kind of doesn't really reach from this from this point, so um, I'm going to have to kind of start leaning it up and then connect the wiring as needs be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apply the thermal paste now to the processor. Um, you want some kind of a thermal paste uh, between the processor and the heat spreader or the heat sink on the uh, the case or the whatever type of a, uh, a heat sink you're using or you know if you have a heat sink fan um, and it's not to glue it down or anything and you do want a really really tight fit between the processor and the heat sink so you don't need to use a ton of this uh, but this no two surfaces are ever going to match up 100 percent perfect even if it's just on a microscopic level and you want the maximum amount of contact area that you can get so thermal paste just kind of takes up the gaps so you're not going to use a ton of this um, there's a lot of different uh, theories and ideas online about what the best practice is is if you know if you want to spread it out even across the surface or if you want to do like a little grain of rice line or a pea. I, I just I typically just put a little spot in the middle of the processor um, some call it a pea size I call it maybe just a little smaller than a pea you know, if you can get the little strings to kind of behave but just put a little spot in the middle of the processor and like I said you are going to you are going to want a pretty tight fit. This is going to press uh, pretty tightly up against the uh, heat sink, so that will spread out across the processor once you once you screw it in place. Now, in a lot of cases, your uh, hard drive or solid state drive, uh, any optical drives you have, are actually going to get power from your power supply. Uh, but since this one just uses a uh, laptop power supply, and then it has a DC to DC power supply built into the board that supplies the rest of the components. Uh, the power supply connector for the solid state drive is actually going to plug directly into the motherboard. The mother has the motherboard has a SATA power out connector on it. So both of these connectors from the solid state drive are going to plug into the motherboard, whereas usually the data cable would plug into the motherboard, and then this would actually plug into a wire that came from your power supply. Uh, but both of these are going to plug into the motherboard, and then like I said, the front panel connectors are going to plug into it too. Uh, so I'm going to kind of start uh, lowering the motherboard into place and connect the wiring up as I go. It's going to be a little awkward, might not be the easiest thing to see, uh, but hopefully be able to get the general idea of what's going on. And then I do have the hardware out that will actually, the screws and washers that the case came with to attach the motherboard into the case. All right, I've got the motherboard just kind of propped in here and I'm going to connect the front panel wiring. We have our power button wire, hard drive LED, which is just that little LED that'll flash when the hard drive's being accessed. And then we have our power LED. Now 
Now with the case, with the motherboard most of the way in the case, you're going to want to just kind of take a peek through the gaps and make sure no wiring is getting pinched and nothing is getting in between the processor and the heat sink where that has to mate up. So you're getting a good, good solid contact there. Now there's, there's tiny little traces on the back of the motherboard and you don't want those to get damaged or scratched or short out in any way. So we have these insulating washers to go between the screws and the motherboard so you don't get any kind of shorts and you also want to be careful when you're putting in the screws that you're not slipping with the screwdriver or um, or basically scratching or scraping or damaging the back of the motherboard you'd hate to slip with a screwdriver and gouge gouge the motherboard and, and damage any of these components i don't know how well you can see in the video but you have just these hundreds of tiny little lines on the motherboard and those are actual electrical contacts on the board so you don't want to damage any of those so you want to use the insulating washers provided um, and you want to be really careful with the screws and the screwdriver so that you don't slip and damage the board now if you're if you're building a um, kind of a more standard build with a computer inside a larger case uh, most of the time you'll be using a heat sink uh, a heat sink fan that will connect to the uh, the motherboard uh, the included one just has little plastic pins that snap through uh, the holes, so there's nothing on the back side that could short out. Uh, some of the some of the larger heat sink fans actually have a bracket that comes on the back and has screws that actually hold the heat sink to the motherboard from the back, and those will usually come with some type of insulated washer or some type of a uh, piece of plastic or something that'll go underneath that hardware as well to protect the motherboard. So you want to make sure you always use that because you don't want anything metal pressing against the back of the motherboard where you could have contact and have damage. Now again with these screws you don't want to crank them super tight. You don't want to you know you don't want to break the board. You don't want to strip anything out. You don't want to cause any damage but you do want them to be snug because this is these are actually what hold the processor against that heat sink and you do want good solid contact with that heat sink. You don't want there to be any kind of a gap between the processor and that heat sink to where, uh, to where you don't get good, uh, good heat conduction. So now I'm just going to put the rest of the screws in that hold the motherboard into the case and we should be all set. Now that we got all the screws in, the motherboard's fully secure, we're going to go ahead and close up the case. And again, you want to make sure that, um, especially with this case, um, but there's other, you know, with other cases too, uh, there's going to be various mounting points and various um, various intersect points inside the case whenever you're putting covers back on. You want to make sure no wiring is in the way. Nothing's going to get pinched or damaged. And then I'll put the screws in the side to hold this together and we'll be ready to start powering this thing up and installing software. One last thing quickly, the antennas just actually thread right onto those posts. And then once that's tight, they can actually still swivel. And then you can just angle those however you want. So we'll get them both angled. And look at that, nice little antennas. <laughs> so now we're really ready to go. All right, I'm gonna power it up for the first time. And I'm gonna press the delete key to get into the BIOS uh, so that we can change the, the boot order so that I can set it to boot off of the USB drive so that we can install Windows. I have a USB flash drive in there and we're gonna get it set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it on. All right, and then now we're in the BIOS and it is a uh, mouse op operable BIOS, so the mouse uh, and the mouse does work here and so we can go to the boot menu and right here it says Windows 10 right here and that's what we're going to click on to boot off of that because that's the Windows 10 uh, USB drive and now we're in the uh, Windows 10 installed it's just that easy so like I said you go into the uh, the boot menu in the BIOS and just choose to manually boot off of the USB drive and now we're installing Windows off of the USB drive and right now it's asking if I want to run Windows setup 32-bit uh, or 64-bit uh, I'm going to run Windows 64-bit, uh, so I'll go ahead and choose that with the keyboard and press enter. 
and now it's loading files. Uh, what that means is actually loading the files off of the USB drive into the memory so that it can get started with the install process. It's not actually installing anything on the hard drive yet. Uh, now, now that it's actually loaded itself partly, we have the mouse control and we're going to install English. You can buy uh, other versions of Windows. So we'll go ahead and hit next and I'm going to hit install now. It will ask for the uh, uh, for the software key, which or the product key, which is on the, the little card that comes with Windows, and there it is. It's the first thing it asks for. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in now. Uh, I'll probably cut that out because it's going to be pretty loud with my clicky keyboard, and it's not something that you really need to watch me put this whole key in. And I don't want you to see the whole key, so there you go. All right, so I hit next after putting in the product key, and the next thing it asks me is to accept the license agreement for Windows and the Windows 10 license agreement does have a lot of stuff in it that isn't exactly exciting for a lot of people, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and accept it. And um, right now we have upgrade or custom install and it says advanced, but that is the one you want to choose. An upgrade would be um, if you were actually upgrading from a different version of Windows or if you were just um, kind of like repairing your install. So we're going to choose custom install. And then it asks to pick what drive to put it on. We only have the one drive. So we'll go ahead and choose that one. And we'll hit next. And that's it. It's installing Windows. And um, <clears throat> I, I don't necessarily have to leave this real time so that you can see the whole thing. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to it. It's going to uh, install Windows, um, set it all up. And then next thing you know, it's going to be at a window asking us to uh, enter uh, you know, choose a password, set up our user account, that kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that because uh, most of it is pretty straightforward. It's going to walk you through the whole thing, and um, and there's not a whole lot to it. So that's all it takes to install Windows on your new computer. I just wanted to uh, real quick go over something that I found. Uh, normally, when you build a computer, you're going to have a heat sink and a fan, and that fan's going to plug into the motherboard, and the motherboard's going to detect that fan. Uh, but since we're not using a fan on this system, we're using a uh, fanless system, there's no fan plugged into the motherboard, and the motherboard detects that as an error. So every time this computer starts up, uh, it, it locks at, a, at the setup screen, and it forces you to enter the BIOS because it's seeing a problem. Um, so I just wanted to show you how to fix that issue. Um, so I'm back in the BIOS here, and I went to the advanced, uh, the advanced portion of the BIOS. It automatically starts up in easy mode, but I went into the advanced mode. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the boot menu uh, in the BIOS. So I'm going to click on boot up here at the top of the screen. And then now I'm in the boot menu and I did change the boot order um, already. So I set my Toshiba solid state drive as the boot option number one and I disabled uh, boot option number two because I don't have an optical drive or anything installed. Uh, so I'm not going to be using boot option number two. So I went ahead and disabled that. Um, but then uh, what we have for that error message, uh, where it detects the uh, the fan not connected, if you scroll up here, you can see uh, an option here. It says, wait for F1 if error, uh, and by default, that is enabled. Um, I've disabled it here. Uh, if you click on it, you can see the options to either enable or disable that, and by default, it was enabled, so I've disabled that. So now it it's still going to see the CPU error, uh, or the, the no no CPU fan error, uh, but it's going to ignore it and it's going to go ahead and boot boot to Windows anyways. So uh, just a little something I wanted to cover and show you how to correct that because uh, that is going to be an issue if you uh, if you use at least this this motherboard and this BIOS setting this BIOS uh, with this setup. So just something to be aware that it's there and something you may have to change. I don't know if other brands BIOS will do the same thing or not, um, but then you'll just exit and then you'll save the changes and you can see here. It's just showing the changes that I made. And so now when we save and exit, now it's going to restart the system. And now when the system boots, uh, if you look down in the bottom left corner of the screen real quick, you'll see it says fan error, uh, but then it just it's just going to go ahead and boot anyways. So uh, just something I wanted to, uh, wanted to show and point out that that is going to be something you may have to uh, correct just if you go with this exact setup, this fanless setup that I have. Uh, not a big deal, just something to be aware of. So, so Windows uh, finished installing completely, and 
now we are out at the desktop and everything's ready to go uh, now there will be uh, just a few more things left to do uh, most things uh, drivers for most things were automatically installed by Windows the motherboard did come with a driver disk uh, so I'm going to attach my external CD drive and just check that disk out and see if there's any drivers I need off of it uh, but also I'm going to run Windows Update and it's probably going to update Windows a bunch of times and that's going to take a while and it's going to be pretty boring and <laughs> but it is something you're going to want to do after you install Windows uh, other than that most of the other drivers will should be automatically updated by Windows Update so uh, there really shouldn't be much to do after this at, other than just installing Windows. Uh, uh, that's it. Computer's built. It's working. Um, so I hope that was helpful. That's a, the complete build step by step. Um, everything else is just just software to your taste. So uh, if you have any questions, post them up down below. I'm sure I missed some things and you'll let me know. Um, and as always, thank you for watching and take care.